The Strangers Chapter 1 is actually not a prequel contrary to what I thought going in. Are we sure this isn't a prequel? I mean, in the trailer there is a literal black screen with text that says, Discover how the Strangers became the Strangers. That makes it sound like a prequel. And I wouldn't have known otherwise while watching the film, but the people of the internet have told me that it is not a prequel, so I guess it's either a reboot or it's set between the first and second film. And this is a franchise that I don't think ever should have became a franchise in the first place. I enjoyed the first one well enough. It was a solid, scary home invasion film that preys on that innate fear that we all have within us of how violating it would be for someone to invade our homes and try to kill us for reasons unknown. The, the lack of motivation by the killers in the original made it a very frightening film. The idea that they would commit this random act of violence for no reason other than the fact that, well, they knocked on a door and the homeowners happened to be there. Then the second film came around in 2018, which was very different. It followed an entire family of characters instead of just two. I actually thought the characters in that movie was okay and it had kind of a cool 80s throwback in terms of its synth soundtrack, some of the song choices, and just the visual aesthetic that it went for, but it's not a very good film. I watched the trailer for this one and thought, now that looks like a bland, boring retread of the first film from 2008, and that is 100% exactly what this is. Seriously, you can take every single plot beat from that original. I guarantee you it's in here somewhere, whether it's remixed slightly or it's just a straight up copy and paste. All the way down to literal lines of dialogue too. Why are you doing this to us? Because you were home. We've seen all of this before and we've seen it done better. And I always say not to judge a film just because it takes a lot of inspiration from other films in existence already because it's difficult to be completely original nowadays with so much media already in existence. But when you're borrowing this heavily from a film that's literally in your same franchise, borrowing's not even the right word, it's, it's just stealing. It's copying and pasting exactly what they did before, but doing it worse. And when I say worse, I mean, yeah, everything that they did in the 2008 original is here, but it's done worse. The suspense is completely lacking. The characters are extremely one note. The acting is so-so, we'll talk about that in a minute. But it's the same exact plot. The only differences here that I can decipher are, for one thing, these two characters are on a road trip in this movie, so they stay in an Airbnb and be rather than their own home like in the 2008 original. Also in that original the setup for the movie was that Scott Speedman's character proposed to Liv Tyler and she rejected his proposal so that's kind of the source of tension between the characters as the movie goes along. In this one the girlfriend was actually hoping the boyfriend would propose to her and he didn't so that's the point of tension here instead. Those are the only two differences. Everything else is the same from the strangers coming up to the door knocking on it saying the same exact lines that they said in the original and then they come back and slowly but surely things start amping up, they start knocking harder, eventually some axes go through doors and they start breaking into the home and terrorizing this couple. I think it was really a mistake to try to make these characters some sort of iconic slasher villains because that kind of destroys the mystique of what made them scary in the original. They're no longer the perpetrators of this surreal, brutal, completely unwarranted act of violence. Now they're just going around doing this to everybody and it really loses the suspense. And we've seen the characters before. The masks do not scare me anymore. Every single scare in this movie is executed one of two ways. The first of which is a very poorly built up to jump scare. And the other is the typical, a character will be walking through a house, will see a view behind them of a silhouette of one of these strangers and then the character will walk across the screen, and what do you know, the silhouette is now gone. The cast list is pretty small here. For the most part, it focuses on Madeleine Petch, I think I'm saying her name correctly, and Freud Gutierrez, who plays her boyfriend. Both of these characters are extremely bland. I, I think Petch did a fine job with her character. I mean, she does a good job of acting scared and just mortified by what's going on. The boyfriend, on the other hand, had some very bizarre reactions to things initially. Like, there's a point where she's on the ground, scared shitless initially. Neither of them know what's going on, but she has seen these strangers try to break into the home. And she is just unloading all this information to him. And he seems so unperturbed. And that brings me to one of my biggest issues with this franchise as a whole, and that's that the characters act like morons. They wait way too long to start doing things about their situation, such as calling the cops, locating a weapon, or maybe just GTFOing. And just like in the other two, in this film, the characters find themselves in situations where they have access to these things. At one point, they find a shotgun that belongs to the owner of the Airbnb. And yet, somehow, these strangers are able to sneak up on them and outmaneuver them at every point, despite not having any ranged weapons themselves. They just have knives and axes. There's no excuse for getting yourself in a predicament when you have a ranged weapon like this. I was shaking my head and rolling my eyes throughout this entire film. And the ending, I don't want to spoil things, but it follows the original pretty faithfully. Again, giving off the vibe that this is a remake, but 
I don't think it's intended to be because director Rennie Harlan says he didn't want to make a remake and he wanted to honor the legacy of the franchise by doing something new. There's nothing new here. I mean, sure, there are a couple of decent moments of suspense thrown in there. For instance, one scene, they're crawling around in this crawl space, and I'll just say there's an injury involving a loose nail, and obviously the characters don't want to be too loud because they'll alert their attackers of their location. There's a little bit of suspense here and there, moments like that. But these are fleeting moments within a 90-hour movie. <laughs> I'm editing the video right now, and I find it hilarious that I said 90 hours. Obviously, I meant 90 minutes. That in large part, copies the original beat for beat while doing everything infinitely worse. And the final moments give a setup for a sequel that was so ham-fisted and poorly put together, I was kind of appalled by it. I'm even more appalled to tell you that this is not the worst horror film of the year so far, but it does come close. I'm gonna give The Strangers Chapter 1, one and a half stars. Will I watch part two and three when they come out later this year or next year, whenever the hell it is? Sure, probably, just for the sake of reviewing them but I'm not going in with any expectations above straight garbage because that seems to be all this franchise has left to offer until we see some more creative hands get involved. So that is my review of The Strangers Chapter 1. Be sure to let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments and hit that like button as well as subscribe while you're at it if you want to see more content like this, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.